Welcome back to Talk of the Town on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. We welcome you back to Talk of the Town for this Friday, February 19th. I'm Gary Stevens. Third Friday of the month, we are joined by the phone lady, Ruth Goddard of AT&T, to answer your telecommunications questions. She's on the other end of our Zoom connection. Ruth, good morning and welcome back to WHTC. Good morning. Uh, <laughs> nice I see we are still in winter mode here. So. <laughs> Indeed. If you got a question about telecommunications, uh, Ruth will answer it at 395-1450, 395-1450. One of our network hosts was mentioning, talking about the cold that is going on in Texas and all the issues there. And one of our network hosts was thinking about the old uh, Jimmy uh, 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 Jimmy David uh, uh, Glenn Campbell song, Wichita Lineman. <laughs> yeah. I would assume AT&T ha still has linemen up because uh, the oh, yeah. lines are still there. Definitely. Um, you know, and this is our people. Our, we go out in any weather to fix what we can and what we need to to keep those lines open, whether it's wireless towers, wired equipment, you know, our people, we find a way to get people into work and out on the roads to fix those things. Uh, Consumers Energy was mentioning they were sending crews out east to deal, to help uh, assist other utility companies. Uh, AT&T the same way in terms of allocating resources? Yeah, we, we have a long history of um, sending people from one state to another to help in emergency situations. Uh, I don't know if any Michigan people are going, um, but it wouldn't surprise me. The reason why I bring this up a little bit, uh, uh, one other thing about the, the, the storms, um, for those who do follow history of telecommunications, AT&T, uh, the original, which was uh, – you know, the American Telephone and Telegraph Corporation, it got busted up in the 70s and 80s to become the Baby Bells, and eventually Southwestern Bell, based out of San Antonio, uh, emerged, took over the AT&T moniker, took over Ameritech and uh, Michigan Bell, and becoming now the uh, phone carrier in our area under AT&T. Um, I assume AT&T's headquarters is still uh, in San Antonio, or it's, no, it's it, become... It's in Dallas now. But still. Have, it, it, but it's, it's still... still in Texas, yeah. And and Dallas was hit hard. Um, there were some conference calls this week that had to be canceled because uh, some WebEx and Zoom-type meetings um, because you know, working from home and they didn't have. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a tough situation. If you got a question for, um, Ruth Goddard from AT&T, she'll be happy to take it at 395-1450, 395-1450. Ruth also, uh, uh, is involved in terms of monitoring through her office in Lansing developments at the state capitol in the legislature involving telecommunications issues. Um, I'm not certain how much you are aware of Senate Bill 46 that was authored by oh, yeah. State Senator Eric Nesbitt of Lawton, who represents Allegan County, uh, along the lake shore. And his uh, bill got passed by the Senate, now heads to the House. How yep. will that impact AT&T? Positive, well, negative, or, yeah, or either way? We supported that bill. Um, there are some bills offered up in the House. I don't know if they exactly mirror that, but they're very similar by Representative Beth Griffin out of the Matawan area. Um, you know, it's we definitely supported Senate Bill 46. It, it does help carriers um, deploy lines out into the rural areas because it does give them a break on the personal property tax for that, for those lines, for that equipment. And reason why that has become a very important part here, uh, Jim Story, the Allegan County uh, Board Chairman, uh, has been champ championing this effort because Allegan County is one of those areas that has been a little bit on the backside of uh, uh, broadband access. I think whenever talk, people talk about, uh, you know, 
spreading out in broadband access, 3G, 4G, 5G things. I take a look at some of your competitors. So, you know, they show where we got the most of our area. But I look at the UP and it's kind of dark. <laughs> it's like the well, UP and Northern Michigan need to be taken care of. Well, and, you know, I, broadband access involves more than just um, wiring it into your house. There are, uh, you know, there is wireless broadband access. There is fixed wireless where it goes, the signal goes from a cell tower to a small receiver about the size of a pizza box on the outside of your house and then is hardwired in. You know, people have an unfounded mistrust of wireless broadband when in reality, um, in a lot of places, that's going to give you a faster speed than what some companies are offering on a wired basis, hardwired basis. Um, you know, the, the digital divide, yes, there are certainly areas, no one is disputing that, that are underserved or unserved. Part of that is because the, the broadband maps that the FCC uses are not terribly accurate. And there is, they did last year start um, an initiative to correct that and create new maps with better information. Um, you know, and so you've got a mapping problem to know exactly where is served, where is underserved. And of course there are federal funds then to help companies deploy in those areas. Um, you have it in urban areas even um, where, you know, a three mag down is not broadband. Um, and so, you know, you, it needs to be brought up to standards for today. And especially, I think the pandemic, we all know, has really pointed out the problems in that area between virtual learning, people working from home. It, it is a huge problem. And believe me, the industry is looking at it. We are looking at every proposal. How does it help get the, the, the equipment deployed? 395-1450, if you have a question for Ruth Goddard of AT&T, uh, she'll be able to answer it. Yes, she is with AT&T, but she is pretty uh, 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 knowledgeable about overall telecommunications issues. And yes, she does want to uh, uh, promote her company, and that's what she gets paid to do. But uh, she is pretty fair, and we've noticed, known her to be pretty fair in terms of sizing up the overall industry when we've asked uh, questions of her. And uh, if you got a question for Ruth, uh, she'll be happy to answer it at 395-1450-395-1450. I will ask a partisan question if you want to call it that, Ruth. Uh, okay. The 5G situation. Uh, how is AT&T working with its 5G and trying to roll it out and have more and more people involved with it? Well, you know, obviously we are putting um, 5G antennas on our towers. Um, the small cell uh, deployment is vital to getting 5G out to people. Um, right now, small cells, they're meant for a populated area. Um, we have them in various places around Southeast Michigan, the Metro Detroit area, not just the city of Detroit, but metropolitan Detroit. We have them in Grand Rapids. Um, we have some in Portage. Um, they're planned for Lansing. I know that those are in the, in the agreement stages with the city. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not something that happens overnight. And because of both the FCC ruling a few years ago and the state uh, law that went into effect in, I think, 2019, 2018 or 19, um, you know, some municipalities are not thrilled because it did take away some of their ability to charge some pretty unreasonable rates to attach to light poles and stuff. Um, so, you know, and it, it created shot clocks that they have to respond to the permits, either approve or deny um, within a certain amount of time. So, you know, it's not a process. 
it's ongoing. It's not a process that happens overnight. Um, it is ongoing and it does involve a sizable uh, monetary investment. And we are, we are making that investment. All the companies, T-Mobile, Verizon, everybody is doing it. It's just, it's going to take time to get there. 395-1450, if you have a question for Ruth Goddard of AT&T, she'll be happy to answer it at 395-1450. Good morning, you're on the line with Ruth. Uh, good morning, Ruth. I got a question. I keep getting uh, a lot of telemarketer calls. And um, I get one especially, I answer it, and it, it makes a beep, beep sound all the time when I answer it. And I, I got, I'm, I'm bugged to death for those now, can I have those blocked from AT&T into my home? Are they on your landline or your... Or on my a, landline, yes. Your landline? Um, I, I don't know that you can block on a traditional copper landline. Um, you can call the... We have an... Or we used to, I assume we still do, have an annoyance call bureau. Um, you also, have you registered with the FCC on the do not call list? Yes, I have, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, about three months ago online. Uh, okay. You know, another thing that sometimes works, not always, um, because I get these calls too. Um, sometimes if you press zero, it will take you to a live person and you tell them, take me off your list. And they do, they will probably hang up on you the minute you say that, but they do do it. Um, so, I mean, they-, oh, they I have older, older phones. I just press zero on my yep. regular phone. Now that's not, that's not gonna work every time, but it will work sometimes. It will get you, it automatically transfer you, transfers you from a recorded sales call to a live body. They think you're, you know, gonna sign up for, whatever they're trying to well, sell. Well, when, when I go to answer that, when I pick it up, otherwise it'll go to my answering machine and it'll make that beeping sound. When I answer it, it'll still go automatically beep, 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 beep. Um, that's probably because it's being recorded on their end. Um, but, you know, what you, like I said, you can try. It doesn't always work. Sometimes if you listen all the way through, It'll say, press this or press that, or, you know, you just say, yeah, and then they'll transfer you to a live person to get the information that but, they need. But, but the thing is, and Wesley, I, I think I know what you're talking about in terms of instead of hearing anything, you just hear electronic noise. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's, right. It's, al it's almost as if this person is trying to call for a modem, for a fax at times. Okay. And, that could well, also or be too. It, it's um, it's simply faulty equipment on their end. Um, you know, they do these calls. Uh, they're robo calls. They're set up. They just go through and randomly take numbers, and equipment dials it. It's not like there's a person dialing it. So sometimes there is um, problems with their equipment. Um, you know, I I would say. Um, I will try and look up the information for the Annoyance Call Bureau, and they can probably help with this too. I don't think there is a way to block on a traditional copper landline. Okay. There is on a wireless or on a VoIP uh, internet served phone line. There is a way to block them, um, but I'm not sure on a copper landline if we can do that. Okay, well, yeah, but thank I can't you answered my certain. question. But I get them about the same time every day, and I'll get them like three of them right in a row, and then they'll quit. Yeah, it's like it's almost automatic on that calling on that. It I, is. They're, they're auto dialers. And if you do get someone, if someone, if you don't get just the beeping, what you're getting is probably a recorded sales pitch. Okay. All righty. Thank you very much for the call. Thank you. Bye. 395-1450, 395-1450. Quick question, Ruth, and then we'll take our break. Does companies, do you still see people, and I say people, firms, selling equipment 
for uh, uh, a caller ID for the copper land lines? Or is that becoming now passe because more and more, fewer and fewer people are having copper landlines? Well, you know, it's, I have not seen any in a long time. But most phones nowadays um, are somewhat, even if it's a copper landline, most phones are somewhat digital and have a screen and if you sign up for even on copper landline service, caller ID service, that's going to come up right on that phone. You don't have to get separate equipment for it. Okay. I'm, I'm just thinking because uh, my mom's phone over in suburban Detroit, uh, it's connected to a, a, an answer machine. You know, this is something from, I think, uh, you know, at least 20 years, about 20 years old, but it does have a little screen to show who is calling and so she can decide whether or not to let the uh, answering machine answer it or yep. pick it up herself. And I, yep. I, I'm just kind of wondering whether or not this has become passe as more fewer and fewer people have copper lines. It's, it's not um, a matter of what kind of line, it's that the technology has evolved. Um, so it's, it's built into the networks now, whether it's a copper network or the internet fiber network. Good morning. You're on the line with Ruth Goddard. Good morning. Miss Wesley again. Did Ruth said she was going to put uh, the number on for me to call? The Annoyance Call Bureau? The annoyance Call number. Okay, I can leave you my number and you can call me back? Or Well, actually, That's you, know, right. you, know, hold you on, can hold call on. me after the show on my, um, my phone and my cell phone and... I will look and see, um, give me about 10 minutes after the show ends to do some research and try and find that number. And the number for you to get a hold of you, Ruth, please give it. 517-515. Okay, five, five, okay, hold it. 517. Five, one, one, seven. Yep. 515. Five, one, five, one, nine. One, nine, four, five. Four. Four, five? Yep. Okay. Let me read this back. Five, one, seven. Five, one, five. Okay. Nine, uh, one, nine, four, five. Correct? Yeah. Five, 19... one, seven. Yep, that's correct. 1945. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Bye. And okay. I thank you very much for the call. 395-1450-395-1450 if you have a question for Ruth Goddard. Um, yeah, go ahead, Ruth. Um, one thing I'd like to say is, you know, with roads the way they are, we are back into definitely winter. And I know I always harp on don't text and drive. But it distracted driving isn't just texting and driving. If you're holding on to a cell phone, and the roads, and you're talking, and the roads are bad. You're not giving 100% attention to the roads because you're talking. You only have one hand to steer. You know, distracted driving is, is a lot of different behaviors. Please be smart. Don't do that. Use hands-free. Um, there is a bipartisan series of bills that is going to be introduced in the state legislature, um, banning the use of handheld cell phones while driving. Um, and, and we'll monitor that. Um, just, you know, no phone call, no text, nothing is worth putting yourself and others in harm's way. So please do not drive distracted. Now, some driving experts, Ruth, and we're not saying you're a driving expert, even though I, we know you're a good driver. Oh, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, some driving experts even say the hands-free can be considered distracting because you're not you're focusing on the conversation instead and of that's true. On that. That's true. Um, I have noticed even if if I'm driving, say from Lansing to Holland, if I am on a call for a length of time, eventually. I'm, I am not focusing totally on driving. I, I am somewhat, but 
you know, I'm, and I might be, I'm able to look out the windshield, et cetera, but I might not react as quickly as I should or could. Um, and that's not always, if it's a short call or, you know, I mean, if you're not really interested in the call and you're paying more attention to driving than talking or listening, that that's one thing, but yeah, I mean, it distracted driving is a lot of different behaviors and they're all dangerous. 395-1450-395-1450. We've got another minute or so before we have to button up this edition of this segment of WHTC's Talk of the Town. I'll open up a, a, a Pandora's box, Ruth. I know it's a little late to open up this box, but I'll open it up <laughs> That's anyway. okay. Do it at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, change of administrations and probably the uh, effort to try to uh, end net neutrality in Washington. Um, you know, we went through a change of administration four years ago, and we do every four to eight years. at and T supports an open internet. You know, we don't we don't monitor. Um, we don't prioritize one traffic over another on the internet. Um, but we have to wait and see what's proposed because there are some things that may have unintended consequences. We've seen that before at the federal level and the state level, um, unintended consequences of legislation that is passed. So we just have to wait and see. Um, our, our people in DC know President Biden quite well, have worked with him before. Um, they know the FCC commissioners. I'm sure that there will be a lot of discussions going on. Yeah. Um, and of course, AT&T is not going to get involved. I don't think and it should get involved with the squabble that we are having right now with social media <laughs> and trying to get no, access. No, back. we don't because, you know, we don't, we don't own those platforms. All we are is the carrier and we don't say what people can and cannot put put out on an app, it's an app that makes that determination. And that's their right, I guess. They're a business. It's like no shirt, no shoes, no service. And they have the right. Um, you're using their app for free to say what you can and cannot say, I guess. I mean, that is, you know, I, I guess that's their right. We don't, we don't get involved in that. All we are is the conduit between the user and that app. With those topics now out of the way we're done with this segment Good. we've got it of at&t thank you very much for joining us today and uh wish you and everybody at at&t well yeah. and if all goes well let's do this again in march yeah um you know it was one year ago this month was my last in person there so we miss you get back to that soon let's I hope so Holland. let's hope so ruth Goddard, thank you very much for joining us on 99.7 and 14.50 WHTC.